Ah, Captain Marvel. The movie that sent a thousand fanboys into an incandescent rage. Honestly, I don't think there's been any more rage directed in a movie since, well, uh, The Last Jedi. Disney does seem to be getting all the undiluted fan hate today, doesn't it? Now, certainly, there was a lot of reasons that created this swirling vortex of hatred directed at the Brie Larson film, and most of them not good. There was yelling about diversity, both within the movie and in film criticism of all things, and just plain good old-fashioned sexism. You know, the one your grandfather still thinks is okay. And so apparently do many in society. So many issues condensed into a film that just turned out to be... okay. But one of the biggest criticisms thrown at Captain Marvel was that she belonged to that ever-dreaded pantheon of fictional characters. The Mary Sue. I know, it's terrifying. And the argument that a lead character in a major franchise is a Mary Sue certainly isn't exclusive to Captain Marvel. In fact, it's become a common refrain for any female-led vehicle today. Characters like Rey in Star Wars, Michael Burnham in Star Trek, or the latest female incarnation of the Doctor all have had the label Mary Sue thrown at them. Most of the time, when many of us hear someone crying, Mary Sue! We generally dismiss it as a sexist retort hurled from fanboys who can't handle a female character becoming the lead of their favorite franchise. How can we ever relate to women? Let me just go back to identifying with my magic space wizards, please. And certainly there is a lot of the darker side of that fandom out there that doesn't want to change and sees any other identity getting representation as a direct attack against themselves. But I want to take a moment and ask, is there actually any validity to the criticisms of these characters being Mary Sues? And what is a Mary Sue anyways? So let's break down the concept of a Mary Sue and if it's actually sexist. It's time to nerd out. The Mary Sue, or Marty Sue as the male version of a character is called, is any character who is incredibly skilled and impossibly good. Whenever they enter a story, they grab the attention, even away from characters who we've known for a much longer time. The plot tends to revolve around them completely, a plot which typically they'll be able to solve without much strain or stress. They'll have flaws, but only ones that make them more endearing and rarely have any actual impact on the plot. Excuse me, I'm sorry I have this one tiny scar on my face that you can only see if you squint really hard, but it totally makes me incredibly self-conscious. Stuff like that. They'll usually have a unique name, eye color, hair color, or something else that makes them stand out. Everybody falls in love with them, and they usually get the guy or girl in the end, often without much effort. In all ways, they are a perfect person. The concept of the Mary Sue comes from where all truly important things in life come from, Star Trek fandom. Back in the 70s, Star Trek fanzines were one of the ways Trekkies kept their beloved series alive after it was cancelled. They helped to create a sense of community and creativity, and part of this community created what we now call fan fiction. And a significant amount of this fiction, which was typically written by women, followed a pattern of the adventures of adolescent female members of Starfleet who were incredibly capable and talented and who everyone on the Enterprise came to adore. In other words, they were often stand-ins for the authors themselves, who had a form of wish fulfillment by placing themselves into their favorite fictional universe. The exact name, Mary Sue, came from a short story called A Trekkie's Tale by fanzine editor Paula Smith, who wrote it as a parody of this type of wish fulfillment. Let me read you the first few sentences of that really lovely, unique story. And now a reading of A Trekkie's Tale by renowned author Jesse Earle. <clears throat> gee, golly, gosh, gee willikers, thought Mary Sue as she stepped on the bridge of the Enterprise. Here I am, the youngest lieutenant in the fleet, only 15 and a half years old. Captain Kirk came up to her. Oh, lieutenant, I love you madly. Will you come to bed with me? Captain, I'm not that kind of girl. You're right, and I respect you for it. Here, take over the ship for a minute while I go get some coffee for us. Mr. Spock came onto the bridge. What are you doing in the command seat, Lieutenant? The captain told me to. Flawlessly logical. I admire your mind. The rest of that story goes exactly as you'd expect it, with Mary Sue saving the entire Enterprise crew and eventually having her birthday be recognized as a national holiday. After the parody came out, Smith and other editors began referring to similar submissions as Lieutenant Mary Sue's, and hence, the battle cry of a million angry YouTube rants was born. And now that we know what a Mary Sue is, let's answer 
Is it sexist? Come on down! I am the arbiter of answering if all things are sexist or not. Okay, well, certainly the term's origins are mildly sexist in that they were used to criticize women's stories specifically. Even though the criticism itself came from a woman, that doesn't make that any less true. When something's targeting women specifically for their writing and looking down upon it and insulting it, that's generally sexist. And this is sadly a long trend of women's writing and fan fiction in general, which is often predominantly written by women. And it's often looked down upon with no regard for its actual quality or merits. There's Sam girls and Dean girls and what's a slash fan? As in, Sam slash Dean, together. Fan fiction can be really well written and it can be really badly written, but we generally don't think of it as good fiction. I mean, in a way, isn't something like the later seasons of Game of Thrones written by male fans of the book series, but without actually adapting any existing work, a form of fan fiction as well? Just food for thought, love Game of Thrones, but think about it. But moving beyond the origins, I'd argue that the actual concept of a Mary Sue or Marty Stew isn't actually sexist. Certainly this type of literary character does exist within fiction, and it's worthwhile to have a shorthanded term to discuss and analyze these types of characters. But here's the thing, a Mary Sue character isn't an inherently bad creative tool. I know, shocking, right? There have actually been a ton of these characters that are beloved by fiction readers. Think of James Bond. He's incredibly skilled and talented. He's smooth talking, often able to get out of any situation with his charm and good looks. Women fawn over him, and he often doesn't have any major character flaws outside of being Pierce Brosnan a few times. Yet James Bond is a lauded character, because we want to see a character like that enter situations that seem insurmountable and have him beat them. He's a form of wish fulfillment for the audience, and we can enjoy watching that and still think the writing is good. The enjoyment, often, comes out of the situations they're placed into rather than the characters themselves. There are a ton of characters like this. Think of Superman, Captain Kirk, or Lara Croft. We revel in these characters' perfection and enjoy the spectacle they create. Mary Sue's can also be used as a tool to highlight problems within the overall world. A Mary Sue may be a perfect character, but the world around them is not. And sometimes what makes them perfect is actually a flaw because they live in a less ideal world. Think of Ned Stark from Game of Thrones, Ozymandias from Watchmen, or Katniss Everdeen from The Hunger Games. Here, the Mary Sues are used to explore larger social or political themes. I volunteer as tribute! Or sometimes Mary Sues are just used to tell a more simplistic story about good triumphing over evil, to teach basic morals. Honestly, literally almost every single Disney princess fits into the mold of a Mary Sue. Certainly Mary Sues can be badly written, for all the reasons that I said above. Characters like Wesley Crusher from Star Trek The Next Generation, Bella Swan from Twilight, and whoever that main dude was in Ready Player One are all forms of author wish fulfillment that didn't quite work and ended up being predictable and one note as a result. But overall, just like any other literary device, Mary Sue's are just tools in a writer's toolbox, neither good or bad. It just depends on if the writer knows the correct way to use the tool. But I don't really think we've answered the question of is the Mary Sue sexist or not? Because while the concept of the Mary Sue isn't inherently sexist as an idea, the criticism is often wheeled in a very sexist way. If you go online anywhere and type in Mary Sue, you'll find that it's predominantly female characters that get labeled with this moniker. And it's never done in a way that actually takes these characters on their merits, but is used as a way to completely dismiss these characters without actually taking a hard look at them. Heck, people were calling Captain Marvel a Mary Sue before they'd even seen the movie. Yet male characters are rarely, if ever, held to that same standard. I mean, look at Captain America. Believe me, I love me my Steve Rogers, especially when he has that beard. Honestly, the biggest death of Avengers Endgame was Captain America's beard. Yet it could be argued that he's just as much a Mary Sue as Captain Marvel. Hell, I wouldn't be surprised if there really isn't a national holiday for Captain America in the MCU. He's perfect looking, overly powerful, and has a perfect, beautiful, amazing soul that he wears on his sleeve and then- Sorry, I, I got lost in my Steve Rogers love there for a second. But truly, Steve Rogers is just as much a Mary Sue as Captain Marvel, regardless of your thoughts on the quality of their individual movies. So why is he considered to be one of the best written Avengers, while Captain Marvel is the one who has endless video essays focused on how terrible her writing is? It's because, no matter how you argue it, Today's society still holds women to a double standard. I don't think this is any more evident in fandom 
than to see the contrast between the reception of a female Doctor Who and a male one. She's essentially still the same exact character, and yet only the female Doctor has had to face the accusation of being a Mary Sue. And as the joke goes, what do you call a male Mary Sue? A protagonist. Yes, I know. Thank you. Thank you. Great joke. <laughs> Women face a much higher level of scrutiny than their male counterparts, partially because of everyday sexism in society, but also because there are much less female characters who get to the same level. Think of how 20 movies from Marvel to finally have a female lead. Now, sometimes calling out these characters as Mary Sue's is somewhat warranted. Captain Marvel wasn't a perfect movie, and some of that comes down to the writing of the character. I don't want to seem like I'm being dismissive of any attempt to criticize the movie, because it should be criticized. It's honestly not one of my favorite Marvel movies, that's for sure. But the fact that she gets so much hate and so much criticism when other Marvel characters have similar, if not the same, writing flaws is telling. And for every character that angry fanboys can hold up as an example that they were right all along, there are dozens of female characters who are wrongfully accused of being Mary Sue's, or are only being criticized as a Mary Sue without understanding the context or quality of the story they are in. Certainly, one hopes that that has gotten better in recent years, at least within the realm of fiction. Heroes like Captain Marvel, Wonder Woman, The Doctor, and Michael Burnham on Star Trek, and many others, are showing that women can kick ass, tell great stories, and be perfect while doing it. But we still have a long way to go. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you like video essays like this or want more video essays focusing on geek culture, LGBTQ issues, or Star Trek issues, subscribe to my channel. I do a lot of these each and every week, and I would love to have you along for the ride. And if you want to make these videos better, consider giving to my Patreon page. Every little bit helps, and it honestly means a lot that you give, just like these fine folks did as well. And until next time, live long and prosper.